Hey shifters, today we're talking about the core, the center of us. You know, a lot more people are taking online classes or they're moving into YouTube to get some of their movement, whether it's, you know, high intensity interval training or yoga or Tai Chi. One of the things I want to remind you is that when you're doing that, you don't have a teacher's eyes on you. You have to be your own eyes. And sometimes it's really hard to know when you're doing the movements and the body mechanics correctly. So today we're going to take a look at a muscle that should be involved in everything you do. Join me. muscle we're going to be taking a look at today is called the transversus abdominis. I call it for short the TVA because I've got a long-term relationship with it. We're on nickname basis. All right, so the TVA. Learning how to activate this is actually kind of easy in some ways. But it is the deepest muscle group for, or the deepest muscle for the core. And so there are a lot of other muscles that layer over this. So it can be kind of tough for some people. But meet me on your yoga mat on the floor and we'll take a look at it. Notice I'm taking my jacket off. I mean business. All right. You ready for this? Okay. Thanks for joining me on the floor. The first thing we're going to do is take your fingertips and feel for your hip bones, the frontal hip bones. And then you're going to slide inside those and it's a little soft right there, which is kind of cool. Now the transversus abdominis, TVA, is not really activated when we're prone and lying here. Maybe a little activated because the knees are, are up, but um, in all it, it's the easiest way to feel this is when you're lying down. What you do want is to feel your shoulder blades on the mat and also feel the back of the pelvis. You're not tilting this way and trying to create space under your body and you're not pushing your blow back into the floor. It's your natural spine and giving that natural curve there. And you're going to maintain that the whole time. So feeling this little soft space, what I want you to do is imagine those bones, imagine yourself pulling them toward each other and then squeezing the belly in and, and you're gonna be able to see my stomach move. So this is me just natural, got a nice warming layer there. And um, I'm feeling the insides of those two frontal hip bones and I'm just gonna place my hand on top so it's easier for you to see the hand going in when I squeeze in. So I'm gonna just draw, imagine drawing the bones toward each other and then the belly, low belly toward the back or toward the floor. And then release. So it's up a little higher now. Contract, try it with yourself and see if you can feel that the hand going toward the back, and then let that go, and try it again. And then release. So what, I wanna make sure that you're, you're doing this in the way that that is correct, because a lot of times this is what happens. You'll feel that, and you'll push, and the fingers will actually push out that's a different muscle that you're using. You're trying to draw in and toward the center of the body using that corset. So if you're pushing out, see how my belly rises? That's not the TVA. It's drawing in and hugging in so that you're supporting your spine. Two more problems that can arise. So you can feel this and think you're doing it when you're pushing your back toward the floor and tilting the pelvis. That's not using the TBA either. I mean, you might be, but you're feeling different muscles working there. And it's not arching either. 
So you want to make sure the shoulder blades and the back of the pelvis are rooted and you're just gonna squeeze and feel the belly sort of flatten and then relax it. Let me tell you, I just want to put in a personal note here. There is nothing important about a super flat belly. Just love your belly. Okay, that's enough from me. All right, so we're gonna squeeze and then let that go. And then squeeze in and let that go. So you're feeling the percentages of it. Maybe it's really relaxed right now. Here's 10% activation, 20%, 70%. Oh. But it's really activated right now and just kind of playing with the fact that, oh, I can really feel this. Not only maybe you're feeling it really here, but now you're beginning to knit the ribs a little bit, which is also how the TVA helps hug the body. And then just let that go. Here's another exercise that you can do to make sure that you're recruiting this really important muscle while you're doing other movements. So take your feet out a little bit and just allow, like, your feet are at hip width apart and your legs are at a nice 90 degree angle. And you're going to place your hands out to the sides of you and draw the TVA in and then help the TV or the TVA is going to help you lift a leg and then lower it. Keep that corset muscle activated as you do this. And what you want to make sure of is that you're not arching your back to lift this and just letting this all go. You're going to hug it in, keep the spine neutral, hips neutral, shoulder blades are touching the mat, and you are just slowly lifting and lowering. And depending on how much of the TVA you have activated, this could be a really good workout. Nice core workout. So hugging in and helping the hip flexors lift the leg up. And if you can imagine, if you're doing really high intensity interval training and you're lifting your legs without using this, boy, you may have some hip flexor and low back pain coming at you. So make sure you're doing this nice and safely and really using this major core muscle. And if you want to lift them both up at the same time, hugging in here and slowly lowering, that can be an amazing core workout. All right, so that's how you feel it in a prone position. We're going to go to standing and show you a couple of movements in yoga to make sure that you're activating it there as well. So you got the feeling of the TVA activated in a prone position. Now we're going to try it standing up. Now put your fingertips on those bones and draw in. And it's going to feel a lot firmer now just because you're standing and using those layers of muscles to keep your body upright. So take a moment and just kind of feel this with me. See if you can, and I'm going to show you from the side too. Again, warming layer. So taking the hand and drawing in. And then letting that come back out again. And noticing if you're drawing in and tilting, because you don't want that. You just want to stand up nice and tall. And begin by drawing the belly in. And just hugging yourself used to say, oh, draw the belly button back to the spine. Ow, don't do that. You're squishing all those organs. They have a right to some space. Come on now. All right, so hand on the low belly or maybe even, you know, near the rib cage, and just kind of feel <sighs> hugging in and then releasing out and hugging in. Releasing out 
So I'm slightly activated here, but now I'm going to just recruit more and more and more muscle fibers in this big corset muscle and then letting that go. So let's just take a typical posture in yoga. Uh, how about um, crescent pose? So my right leg is forward, my left leg is back, and I can feel myself hugging in already because it's like, oh, you're in a different position. You gotta support the spine. Okay, so if I just let it go, yeah, I mean, I can stand here, yeah, whatever, crescent, okay, they told me to put my arms up. But if you really want to activate this, you want to lengthen the spine, you want to hug into the body, which also not just is a physical thing, but you're hugging your spirit. Yeah, you deserve this. This is good body, good space. So you hug in, reach the arms up, and feel yourself drawing this in. And there's a, you know, that's a strong feeling, like, I've got this. When you're just kind of doing it, yeah, okay. It's not really like you got some life to you. Come on, lift that spirit. So drawing in, and it helps you kind of lengthen the spine up. And maybe you're doing a backbend more, or maybe not. Maybe this is your crescent pose. You do you. All right. And just feeling that hugging in really creates a nice support. And it does beg the question, how are you supporting yourself in this movement? And this doesn't just stay on the mat. It's how you're supporting yourself in your life. That's important stuff. All right, let's take another movement. In fact, we're going to do a little bit of a posture in Tai Chi because Tai Chi is fluid movement. It's always moving. There's no static posture. And so we're going to do um, just the body movement of a movement called single whip. And it just, it turns. So let's just begin there by just turning the body. And notice how you're in this, it's less of this hugging in uh, sensation and more of where does this, where do I need it more? And where can I let go? Where do I need to recruit more of this muscle? Where is it softer? And the closer the stance, the less real need to hold in. But the lower the stance, then more activation has to happen in order to support the body. If I'm just going back and forth, it's not Tai Chi. It's not that nice long spine and that gentle movement back and forth, fluid, from one to the next. And notice how the core harmonizes with the arms and it harmonizes with the legs because the legs have to shift and do things differently as the upper body is turning. Let's try that on the other side. And let's bring it a little closer so you can feel the rotation a little more. So the body is hugging in. Notice this is me just relaxed. Yeah, single whip, whatever. Um, not really. And, and then noticing just how you can draw this in and really enliven the body, enliven the spirit, and come into your movement really being a part of it rather than externally trying to mimic somebody else or be in your head about this is single whip so this is what it i should be doing it's feeling it it's going into the movement and noticing your body and what it feels like again the tva really should be active whenever we are active if we're up and moving around we should be supporting ourselves and the middle of our body. This is the part that makes everything else work. So it should be active, and it should be active to the degree to which the movement is, is difficult. So the more difficult it is, the more you're getting support from your TVA. The lighter the work, 
the less intense it has to be. So think about reaching down to get a dish out of the dishwasher, reaching up. This is all active as you're doing it. You know, you're picking up your cat. You're put, no, you're not putting it on the shelf. Put your cat back down. Reach down, pet your cat, but use your TVA when you're petting your cat and your dog. It's really important. Also, the biggest place to watch when you're sitting at a computer. A lot of times we just kind of slouch there and we don't think about it because we're in do mode. And you want to really be present and support yourself in what you're doing, right? So those are ways that we can use the TVA out and about. Gardening, pulling weeds, spraying your neighbors. Not, not really. So we took a little bit of a look at prone positions and how this is activated, static postures, and moving postures. And I'm really going to encourage you to play a lot with this. If you've got a movement or certain muscles that you're curious about, post your questions in the comments and I'll try to get back with you and create a video that might open up some of that, you know, some of the answers to some of the questions. All right, shifters, have a good day. Talk to you next time. Cheers.